Welcome, Spartans, to Halo Headlines for the week of November 15th to the 21st, part of Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. I'm your host, Oren, and with me today is David. Hello, everybody. What's up, David? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Something happened in the last week that was pretty damn dope. I was not a believer. I'll be the first to say. Didn't think it would happen. I was also a non-believer as well. Yes, non-believer. I was, I was awoken. I saw the light. And now I am a believer. They got me. They sure did. So we will tell you all about what we're talking about if you don't know. But before, we wanted to give a quick shout out and thank all of our patrons for their continued support to make this show and all of our shows possible. Thank you guys so, so much for keeping the lights on. You can head over to patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolve to learn more about our exclusive rewards that we offer our patrons. We have a holiday card coming up. You just need to be, I forget what the tier is, but you can get a digital one uh, relatively low. And if you want a physical postcard, it's a little bit of a higher tier. But I just wanted to plug that. But without that, David, what happened last week, specifically on November 15th? Some cheeky devils fucking launched Halo. So they put out a beta. Uh, Well, first of all, Halo was 20, right? So that's important. Yes, that is important. Halo turned 20, guys. Halo on Xbox. They had a little event uh, that was actually pretty cool. I I liked it. I know we spoke about it already, but uh, it was pretty damn cool. And at the end of it, they 343 got on stage-ish kind of stage, got in person, and uh, launched the multiplayer. We have like a beta. It's live. If you're listening to this, you already know that. You've probably already played it. You have your opinions on it. So do we. Uh, but it's out there. It's it's pretty cool. Um, They did a battle pass. We had a big discussion just on our regular show about what that is, because I struggle with the battle pass. You're still kind of unfamiliar with what a what a battle pass is. So, to any of the games, like Assassin's Creed doesn't have a battle pass, no other game that you have has uh, supports, supports a battle pass system? Now, Aaron told me that The Division did this, and did something similar to this. I have no memory of doing this. Division 2, maybe? Definitely not Division 1. No, definitely not Division 1, but Division 2, but I don't remember there being a thing that you would purchase, and there was definitely challenges and things that you would grind out and get unlockables and stuff like that, but like the intricacies of how this battle path thing that can be purchased to skip a certain amount of the thing, and then you're grinding towards other things, and you have a level, and then it goes away because they replace it with a new thing periodically, and then there's refreshes and whatnot. Uh, it is a bit complicated to me. I'm struggling to get my brain around what what you do and when, what's buyable, what's not buyable, that kind of stuff. So uh, uh, it's out there. Uh, I'm probably the the uh, like the biggest dummy when it comes to that kind of stuff. A lot of people, all those kids these days, would be more knowledgeable than than I would be. Uh, and you seem pretty comfortable with it, uh, Orn. Yeah, I mean, I I understand it. I'm a big Apex player, so I understand that battle pass. I don't really know how like Fortnite does their battle passes and kind of since I don't I don't know who really started it but the first battle pass I was familiar with was I think Fortnite but then I fell off that game when Apex came out and then since then like Rocket League that by daylight even Destiny has a battle pass now and Master Chief Collection has a battle pass and so different games implement it differently and the way that 343 decided to implement it for Infinite is just not great. There's confusion over challenges. There's not enough challenges. There's not enough XP. There's barely any XP at the end of matches, which they just kind of fixed, but it's technically less XP than if and it was in the old system. So it's uh, it's a little messy. And this was kind of things that people vocalized during the flighting that 343, I guess, took note of, but didn't really change. So that's currently the the kind of hot topic, if you will. Aside from that, though, a lot of good re- and positive responses from the, the gameplay. Yeah, everybody seems to love the game, which which is great. I really enjoy it. I find it addicting. I keep wanting to go back into it. You know, there's still some nuances that... I don't necessarily love, but I just kind of attribute that to me still being new at the game. And I feel like that will come. I, I'm, I'm still in that phase where it's like, oh, you know, what? it's not the previous Halo games, but it is this cool new one. So it's not an immediate falling in love, but 
I am having a lot of fun with it. I love how I get online and there's like 20 people playing Halo, just just like it was back in the Halo 5 days and Halo 3 days and um, Halo Reach days. My goodness, like I, I, I've I played with like different groups of people almost every night. And I for that alone, I like love and just kind of linking up with different people and playing and having that competitive arena shooter just definitely feels good on its own. And then the, the, the details and the intricacies, I'll learn that kind of stuff down the line and then they'll fix the battle pass stuff eventually. Moving on beyond that, like it's it's a lot of fun. I, I was, like you said, a non-believer, but I'm happy that it's out. And I'm just really, I'm actually more disappointed that I don't get to finish Diablo 2 because I was hoping to play that all the way up until December 8th. It's the same, man. I'm super bummed, man. I had my game schedule all lined out. I knew what I was doing up to December 8th. And I was like, okay, I cleared my schedule and now I'm ready for Halo. And they fucking ruined it, but whatever. So some of the dates that we're talking about, season one passed us until May 2022. That's nice and long. And they've delayed season two. It's supposed to be around March, but it's delayed a little bit longer. So the season passes will overlap most likely. And they said that you'll never, one pass will never fully replace the other. You can always still grind out older passes. So content won't be taken away from you. There's additional events, customization and various other things coming. Like I said, the Fracture event, I think, starts on the 23rd, which as of recording is two days time. So you should be listening to this. It'll be one day's time. Uh, it goes on till the 30th. So we'll return multiple times during the season. So it's it's these are kind of like hot events, but they come back, which is good. January 2022. So the details around season one event calendar, season two preview will happen, campaign co-op and whatnot. And we should see Forge by then, which is very, very interesting. So uh, the event feature special playlists, challenges and free rewards and different bits and pieces. So I'm intrigued to see how these roll, but uh, this would be pretty cool. Infinite challenge updates. We have daily challenges, now reward 50 XP and resets indefinitely. So this is one of the big things that people were saying. Just playing a game at Halo will get you nothing. So you have to do challenges. So they've made like a daily challenge being you get 50 just for playing the game, which is pretty good. I'm glad they did that. They have double XP boosts now last 60 minutes. What were they at, Orn? Were they... They were 30 minutes. And and that was a good fix because only sometimes would you be able to get like two matches in uh, with 30 minutes because it includes the the like menu time. So what I do is that, you know, if I'm in a team or if I'm queuing up for a match, I'll literally just wait for the counter to start and I'll count down from five. And then when it hits like three, I'll press start you know, or I'll use the uh, the boost and then it'll start playing or it'll, it'll be active and then I'll go into the match and then that match will be like 15 minutes and then I'll come out of it, get whatever bonus. But then to get back into a game and then play the game and then complete the game sometimes doesn't you know, it may take longer than 15 minutes. And so then your 30 minutes is now up. So now you're able to squeeze in like maybe three matches uh, pretty consistently. And if you're really quick with it, if you're playing quick matches, if you're not playing big team battle, you might be able to squeeze four matches in there if you're doing quick play or, or like bot arena or something. So I think that was a really good change. That makes sense. For those of you that have it. I mean, I had a bunch of them from the Monster Energy thing because I was able to get that from work. So I have like I have like 46 boosts. And so now they're all at hours. So that's like that's literally 46 hours of doubled experience I have, um, which is just amazing. Well done, sir. They have fixed a bunch of bug challenges, as you can think, and they've been replaced or fixed. Uh, everyone who logs in between November 15th and November 22nd, so that's today if you're listening to this right now, and also today if you're listening to this when this goes live, you will receive the ultimate reward, which is the Seagull Mark IV Visor Gold. Gold Visor. So they have a bunch of kind of stuff for the 20th anniversary as well. These are all like the normal green stuff and some skins for your Warhag and the AR. So it's pretty cool. Halo the series had a teaser trailer. I hated it. Uh, I don't like teaser trailers. I don't like this <laughs> piece of crap. But it happened. So we're looking at a 2022 exclusively on Paramount Plus. That is not a thing we get on my side of the world. So we're thinking it is most likely Netflix uh, or Amazon Prime. Because you don't have Paramount Plus. No, not a thing here. Um, so the Paramount Plus shows tend to crop up on Netflix, and some of them show up on Amazon. So like the um, like for example, the two the two Star Trek shows got split between those two services. So that can happen. So we're not sure yet where it's coming, but it is coming 2022. Uh, the full trailer is supposed to premiere at the Game Awards, which is on December 9th. So you'll have to stop playing Halo um, to watch this, but I probably won't. I'll probably be playing Halo while watching this. But that's pretty. That's 
that's cool. I'm excited they have a full trailer and that it's coming really soon. I'm quite happy with that. I'll watch it on December 10th after the Game Awards because I probably won't be watching the Game Awards. <laughs> Actually, now that you say, yeah, it really depends on the timing. I have to check that out myself. Uh, I've, I've watched them live in the past and have them running while I, while I do other things because um, some of it's cool. Some of the game announcements and stuff can be pretty hope, uh, pretty dope. Uh, okay, uh, Halo developers share their thoughts and reflect on 20 years of Halo. What's this, Orin? Is this from something specific? This is a Halo Waypoint blog post. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it kind of gives a little bit of an overview of what was announced. So it talks a little bit about, you know, the trailer. It talks about the multiplayer and all that. But then, like, the second half of the article is just a list of a bunch of stories from 3 for 3 developers of... You know, where were they when they played Halo CE and, you know, the Halo CE inspired me to be a game designer. And, and I, you know, I've been at Halo for 20 years, you know, since the beginning. Or not, not that, but like some some people have a longer history than others. And so it's interesting to kind of read the testimonials, if you will, of uh, these developers and kind of as, as they reflect on these uh, last 20 years and how Halo has impacted them, how the industry has changed you know, what they've been striving for since joining 343 to kind of recapture what made Halo Halo. So it's uh, it's a lot of good insight there. If you haven't read it, it's on Halo Waypoint. It's a good read. I don't know. It makes everyone, everyone has a story. You know, everyone that's listening to this has a reason why they love Halo. You and I have a story and that's why we're talking about it. So to hear their stories is is great and, uh, and, and moving at, at times. So if everyone has if everyone has the time to to give it a read, I I definitely recommend it. Thank you very much, Harm. Uh, we also have HTS 2021 to 2022 season reveal. So this is an examination of competing regions, prize pool, broadcasting information, events, and more. Listen to the HTS Pro Talks episode 210 for full scoop and impressions. You can also listen to the episode 209 for their impressions and thoughts on Halo Infinite's multiplayer, which you should do. Those guys are dope. They're really into the Halo multiplayer scene, and there are guys on the ground. Orn, you normally work very closely with these guys. Um, anything else you want to add to these episodes? Just the fact that these two guys are amazing and beautiful people. Yeah, everyone should should check them out. They, like I said, yeah, they dive in. Their most recent episode as of recording is 209, where uh, they talk about Infinite because it, they, they, they recorded it right after it, it, right after it came out. And like, I think they were literally playing it while they were watch or while they were recording because they they were just consuming it all and then with this news it'll be kind of their their headline for uh their next episode 210 so yeah if anyone has any sort of interest uh into the competitive esports scene of halo definitely listen to these two guys talk about it on hgs pro talk and they have a lot to say about um, the state of the game as it is, where esports is going for Infinite, and like the, you know their their journey really has now just started in terms of Halo Infinite esports, and they're going to be kind of riding this train for you know the foreseeable future. So mad props to them, and um, and this is this is their time to shine. Yeah, excited for where you know where they go so if you want to listen to what they and and this blog post is is freaking massive like it, it talks about all the information you need for for like it says like the the regions the pool the broadcasting the rules the, the, and all this other kind of stuff and if you've been following the inside the hcs that tashi's been pushing out over the last year you know that that gives you a little bit of insight into their kind of organizational and, and management of the esports and this is kind of like the last jigsaw piece to where they're they're gonna kick it off. And I think their first their first uh, event is in Raleigh, North Carolina, in like mid December, <laughs> like a like a week after the game comes out. So, so yeah, listen listen to those guys. They're great. Coolio, uh, Halo Infinite has gone gold on November nineteenth. Everybody, so it's official. It's a game. It's real. Because now they're making it into a disc that you apparently can't play yet. But it's there. It exists. It's real. That's that's pretty damn cool. It's always fun to hear when games go gold. Because then you know you don't have long to wait. Uh, especially because some games go gold and you still don't have release dates. But it's kind of fun. So we know it's coming. Halo Infinite goes live on December 8th. Like we said, it has specific times. And 343 have put out what times they are having. It is a global launch. So here we go. 10 a.m. PST. At 1 p.m. EST and 6 p.m. GMT, 
There are other times, of course, they put out a map that kind of gives you an impression. So you can do your maths by then. But I think most of our listeners are in one of these three time zones anyway. Which is pretty cool. So December 8th at 6 p.m. That's going to be a lo- that's going to be a long day for you. Dude, it's, it is going to be a long day. I'm going to be, where am I going to be on the 8th? Where am I going to be? We're going to be filming in White Plains. I might be on a tech scout or something, but I'm going to go to work. I'm going to know that it's the day. And then like, I'm going to go to lunch and then I'm just going to be like, I, I, I need to leave. I need to leave work right now. It's 1 p.m. for you, right? <laughs> yeah, 1 p.m. for me. So I'm going to just try to hammer out my work and just get home as soon as I can. And then I don't know what I'm doing Thursday, but hopefully I'm not on set. <laughs> I'm just going to stay up late and work from home on, on Thursday. Incredibly exciting. Can't wait for this. All right. Like we said, that's a shit ton of news. It's a good work, Arn, on, on, on your scripting there. Anything that you want to add before we finish up, before we wrap, wrap this show up? The, the last thing I'll say is I'll just kind of circle back to the Fractures event you know, and, and kind of the seasonal duration. 343 said that their seasons will last around three months, and they've basically extended season one an extra two months to now being to, to May 2022. So then, you know, of course, season two is now delayed till then. And then season three will probably go till the, the, the fall or something. So co-op campaign and Forge are delayed. So that's sad. But I'm interested to see what they do with these fractures events, because they keep saying that, like, we're going to have events very often. And the, the, this one that's coming out, Tenrai, with the, with the samurai armor and all that, that's going to be returning for multiple weeks throughout the season. So if it's like a once a month sort of a deal, like, what does that mean? So... By the time this airs, it'll be here. We'll know a lot more. So I'm just excited to see kind of what what these events are, what type of gameplay or or playlists come into, you know, what, what, that are live. So I don't know. This is this is kind of their their next iteration of like sustainability. So I'm just very interested to see what it's about. So that's kind of what I'm excited for this this week. Man, it's almost Halo time. It's cool is halo time my guy i'm gonna go play halo in about five minutes <laughs> okay i'm gonna i'm gonna go to bed <laughs> well have a good night i think it's midnight over there thank you thank you it's pretty it's getting close it's it's quarter past uh quarter past 11 so there's some time it's still left in the day also shout out to our uh, our live listeners that stuck around absolutely guys thanks very much for listening to our ramblings and I will say thank you all for joining us. Uh, until next week for the next Halo Headlines episode, there will hopefully be more Halo Headlines um, between now and then. So if you enjoyed this episode and are unaware, please check out our awesome website at halopodcastevolved.com. It features our episode library for all our shows, Podcast Evolved, Mission Debrief, Halo Book Club, Bills of Blocks. Listen to our partners, Will and Joss, like we mentioned, the HCS Pro Talk. They got some good shit going on over there right now. Uh, once again, another shout out to all of our patrons it's for supporting the show, making all of it possible. Thank you guys so much. If you want to know more, it's patreon.com slash Halo Podcast Evolved. It is us. And with that, I have been your host, David. Until next time, evolve. Evolve.